How would you summarise the overall state of play here in Australia as far as there's there's so much, depending on your algorithm, you, it feels like everyone's eating, you know, incredibly well, but then mm. you'll drive past seven fast food outlets on the way to pick up the kids from school. Mm. So um, how would you summarise mm. the state of play in Australia right now? Or is, or is that a, a, a too much of a generalist question to ask? I think it's a great question. You should try living in LA for a little bit <laughs> and see how much fast food there is. Yeah, right. I come here and it's like there's hardly any fast food. Really? <laughs> uh, but so I think there's a, there's a few a few kind of parts to the response to this question. One is we can often find ourselves in a bit of a bubble looking on social media and thinking that's representative of the nation mm. when it's not. Um, the latest study sh- suggests that you know the, the average Australian diet gets about 50% of calories are ultra processed foods. And we can discuss what that means. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll put a link in the show notes to our episodes with Felice Jacker and Tim Spector, who mm-hmm. talked a lot about that. Yep. The average person's getting about 12 to 15 grams of fiber a day, when in reality, probably should be more around 30 grams. Mm-hmm. It's not that more fiber is better, but it, it's a kind of non-linear association. But as you as you go from 12 grams a day to 30 grams, you see significant reductions in risk of type 2 diabetes, obesity, um, various cancers like colorectal cancer, cardiovascular disease. Sorry to stop you there, but what, what, what's the best way to, to, to just increase mm. fiber? Like what, what, what should we be eating more of? And this is like the one tip when people say just like, what's the one thing that people could focus on? to really improve diet quality and lower risk of disease, it would be getting fiber up towards 30 grams a day and just Mm. providing more food for the microbiome in general. And so fiber, it's only found in plants. It's one of the biggest reasons that eating a plant-rich diet is beneficial. So you'll find fiber in fruits, in all vegetables, whole grains, legumes. Okay. Mm. Okay. And, you know, Adding and you know a half a cup of of legumes a day, adding some whole grains. So we're having whole grain bread instead of white bread if you can. Nuts and seeds also great source of fiber. Um, so just finding finding ways to get more plant diversity mm. okay. in, and you will naturally will increase your fiber intake. This mm. is so similar to what I mean t- when we had we had Tim Spector on the podcast a couple of years ago, and he was talking about a very similar thing. He was talking about. He's like 30 different types of plants. Yeah. He said, yeah. Bar, yeah, a week or something. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. it was a day. It's, no, it's a week. It was an hour. It's a, like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it really impossible for people. Yeah. Yeah. 30, yeah. 30 unique plants. Yeah. And you think, every I minute. think he says, li- <laughs> yeah. at least for a month a year, live inside a tree. I think, he says as well. I think that's part of his thing. Yeah. No, that was that was the, the human gut microbiome project. Ah, and they right. found that people who had 30 or more unique plants a week compared to 10 or fewer had mm. significantly more diverse microbiome, mm-hmm. which is associated with lower risk of all those diseases that I mentioned. It's associated with better mental health, less risk of depression, anxiety. And the way to do that is to increase your fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes. And the reason it's thought to believe that 30 unique is is important is that you know, fiber is kind of like an umbrella term. Fiber is not one thing. Mm. There's all sorts of different types Mm -hmm. of food for the microbiome. And if you were actually to break it down a little bit without getting too nerdy, there's three components. There's prebiotic fiber, resistant starch, and polyphenols. These Mm -hmm. are all different classes of compounds in food that feed the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And different plant foods like zucchini or carrot or spinach or kale... Um, pistachios, they all contain different types of prebiotic fiber, different types of resistant starch, different types of polyphenols, which feed different bacteria. Mm -hmm. So if the goal is to increase diversity within the microbiome, you want to be feeding more of these species as possible. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of think of all these different plant foods as like fertilizer Mm. going into the small intestine. They don't get digested there like Mm. how macronutrients, protein, and fats do, they go down into the large intestine and they just fertilize the bacteria. And the reason that's important is that 38 trillion microbiome community, it's kind of like your own little pharmacy. 
Mm. So when you when you feed it, it's dispensing these compounds, like drug-like compounds, which affect your physiology. They affect your blood glucose control, your cholesterol, so your cardiometabolic health. They affect inflammation, which affects everything from risk of depression to risk of various cancers, neurodegenerative disease, and so forth. So you can either have a microbiome that is kind of starving because you're not feeding it, and it's not really working for you, or you can nourish it and get it get it working for you. 